Hey guys, Cez the Vet here. Today we're going to talk about laminitis in goats, a common cause for pain in the front hooves and eating on their knees. We're going to talk about what you can do to prevent it, when to get the vet out, and what's actually going on with these guys. Stick around, I'll see you soon. Hi guys, Dr. Sarah Clues here, Cez the Vet. Let's jump into an episode today on laminitis in goats. Now, if you're a horsey, you've probably already heard of this condition. In horses, we also call it founder or foundering. If you have pet goats, you need to know about this condition and how to prevent it, especially if you're loving on them and feeding out pellets or treats a lot. Anything high carb, they're going to be high risk. Laminitis means inflammation of the laminae. Now, the laminae is the, you can think of it like Velcro that holds the sole of the hoof to the hoof wall. If you were to peel back the hoof wall, it looks kind of like a stringy sort of substance. Now this is obviously a horse's hoof here, I do know that, but there is very similar anatomy in a goat, except for the fact that they've got two toes, of course, instead of one. Now the laminae has a blood supply made up of teeny tiny little blood vessels, some of the smallest blood vessels in the body. So when there's inflammation in the body and the blood vessels inflame and constrict anywhere in the body, this is one of the first places to be affected. Now when these tiny little blood vessels get inflamed and constrict, it reduces the crucial blood supply to the laminae, to that Velcro. And so we have a sudden flare up of laminitis when there is inflammation in the body. Bacterial infections like mastitis or pneumonia, toxin release from a sudden high sugar diet or a rumen acidosis, which is when they have too much sugar hitting the stomach all at once. Um, if they're septic, septicemia, basically anything that causes inflammation in the body itself can cause laminitis. Or, and what we see much more commonly as a cause, is we see a long-term laminitis that has just been smoldering away often for years or across their entire lifetime, usually due to overfeeding over a long period of time. So we call this carbohydrate overload, and it basically alters the bacteria in the gut and causes inflammation. It's a, it's a complicated uh, route there, but all you need to know is it's a carbohydrate overload. Now, of course, as a third cause of laminitis, if the foot is traumatized directly, you know, they get it, I don't know, um, sliced on a fence or something, and you get the laminate directly damaged, of course, you can have inflammation of the laminate at that point as well. Um, and, and last but not least, as with so many things, there does seem to be a hereditary predisposition in some animals. So there are a few contributing factors, but as I say, overfeeding with carbohydrate, sugar, is by far and large the most common cause that, that I see. So, what does laminitis look like? How do you recognize it? I'm a big believer that chronic long-term laminitis is grossly underdiagnosed in goats, in pet goats. I think there's a lot more of it out there than what we realize, and it's just unfortunately not picked up until so much later in life when heaps of that damage has already been done. So what you'll see if, if they're having a flare-up of laminitis is, firstly, tenderness of the feet, usually one or both front feet. If it's in both front feet, you'll see shifting weight from side to side, telling us that both feet are sore and they don't even know which one to be more lame on. Um, but you can get just one or all four affected. Okay, now secondly, they don't want to walk or stand. They're often eating on their knees. Lots of people will interpret eating on their knees as trying to reach the grass, which is not the case. If they're eating on their knees, it's telling us that, they, that they're sore. Okay, you may notice grinding of the teeth, which is a pain behavior. And of course, any signs of whatever the underlying cause of inflammation was. So if it's not just carbohydrate overload, there may be something else going on. Um, so in this case, you would need a veterinary visit to diagnose and treat this, okay? If there's inflammation because they're septic or sick or mastitic or toxic, there could be an underlying disease there. Uh, if you feel the feet, you may notice that they feel hot around the coronet. So this is the fleshy part at the top of the hoof. But if you compare, it'll feel hot around that top part, around the coronet, but very cold at the toe. Now, of course, this is uh, the nature of a hoof anyway, to be colder over the hoof. So, so you'll have to learn to distinguish if the temperature difference feels extreme or not. That may be a vet thing. Um, and this is just because the blood vessels are, are inflamed, so the blood supply to the toe has been compromised. If you par away, if, so if you if you had a vet out to, to skim away the sole of the toe, like you were trimming it, 
you may notice hemorrhaging like in this photo here you can see a thin pink red line around the laminae so where the hoof um, wall meets the sole it can look a little bit like bruising as well but bruising is often painful now when we see this line of hemorrhage where the laminae are um, this is this is actually old hemorrhage so by the time we see it it's already growing out okay that that hemorrhage is what's already happened in the past so in other words if this is the first bout of laminitis that they've ever had you may not see this this hemorrhage line now over time the horn of the hoof will start growing strangely and you can end up with real height differences between the toes. The middle toe will always be larger than the outside toe anyway in a normal animal, but the difference can between become really excessive in a, in a chronic laminitis goat. A classic long-term change that we see is rock hard feet that we call platform soles. Now I just want to mention here that many horse owners know about the classic slippering or snowshoe hoof that a horse can develop with chronic laminitis. This is not the case with goats. So slippering in a goat is generally just from poor hoof care and requires a good staged trim over a period of trims. Another difference between horses and goats is uh, the pedal bone, so that bone in the tip of the toe rotating downwards and falling out of its laminae. That, that can happen in horses. Not very common in goats at all. It's possible, but it's much more rare, so we don't worry about it too much. Okay, so on to treatment and prevention, the key element of this video. The main thing is here, you have to correct the feeding practices, all right? Most cases can be prevented simply by doing this. So by correcting the feeding practices, I mean putting her on a reduced carbohydrate diet. In other words, hey, take her off the long lush grass, cut back any high energy, high energy concentrate, so this is your pellets, grains, molasses, no biscuits or bread. Um, now, of course, the laminitis, once the laminitis has been corrected, we can wean them back onto the pasture, but we need to make sure that there's a high fiber, a high hay intake as well um, to prevent recurrence of, of, the, of the condition. But we do tend to see it with the long spring lush grass. Her activity should be restricted while she's in the painful phase. And a nice deep bed of cushy hay to stand on is going to help her feel a lot more comfortable. Now, anti-inflammatory drugs are crucial. They offer pain relief, but therapeutically, they're actually treating the condition as well. They're taking down that inflammation in those tiny blood vessels, which is really important to, to prevent those long-term changes to the foot. You do need a vet to prescribe this, okay? So you are going to need to get a vet out to, to diagnose this condition and, and help you out with your treatment plan. Right, hot and cold treatments. There has uh, always seemed to be a lot of confusion around, do you heat the foot, do you cool the foot? If you ca Basically it comes to this, if you can catch the inflammation occurring really quickly, as in in the first few hours, then warming those feet is going to be beneficial, it's going to improve blood flow. Okay? However, most people would never catch it this early. So generally, by the time you've noticed the lameness, 24, 48 hours down the track, you want to be using cold therapy running a cold hose over the feet, or standing them in an icy slurry, so adding in crushed ice with water um, and making a foot bath out of it, standing them in there for 20 minutes a couple of times a day, and you'll continue this for seven days while they're having that acute inflammation. Now therapeutic trimming is gonna be really important in these guys as well, as well as those cases that are chronic, that have been going on for a long while. And the aim of the game here is to put those toes slightly longer than you normally would and take the heel just slightly lower. In doing so, you're allowing them to shift their weight back into their heels and take the pressure off those painful toes. Now, of course, I absolutely recommend a vet check. Okay, You don't want to just go ahead and start treating this condition if, if there's something else underlying going on, especially if you don't know that they've ever had laminitis before. Um, she may well be needing antibiotics and, and treatment for whatever the underlying cause of the laminitis is. It's, if it's not a simple carbohydrate overload situation, she needs other treatment. Okay, So definitely get your vet out, um, but uh, feel free to use this information that we've discussed today to, to supplement um, the, the treatment that, that your vet's discussed with you. Okay guys, all right, we're going to leave it there. Thanks so much for checking in. Um, take home message, if your goat is eating on her knees, uh, or shifting weight from side to side or rocking back in that saw horse, we call it a saw horse stance, rocking backwards with the front feet 
you know, abnormally far forward to take the pressure off those front toes. That means she is sore and she needs veterinary attention and it may well be a laminitis case. So while you're waiting for the vet to come out, cut back on those carbohydrates, put her on a deep bed of hay, keep her comfy um, and, and get the vet out. All right. Okay, guys, I will see you later for the next one. Please do thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, if it was helpful, share it, education is key. Uh, subscribe to the channel and comment down below. I'll jump on and, and try and answer some of the first few questions as I can. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye-bye.